So we'll talk about big ticket item today mm-hmm. and has been on the minds of a lot of uh, everyone basically for the yeah. last 24 hours just about. This injury is so big that my little niece who's 10 years old was in a group chat with her friends and they actually brought up in the group chat because she asked me when I went wow. home. That's how big it was. Yeah, so what it happened is. is DeMar Hamlin, pretty routine tackle, goes down, gets back up, and then kind of grabs at his chest and just kind of falls back to the ground, relatively unconscious, not moving, which is the scariest thing to see. Now, precursor, if anyone is ever going to have a cardiac event, there may not be a better place in the world than in the middle of an mm-hmm. NFL field yeah, with yeah. everyone watching you. There is about 20 trained personnel. I, I could be wrong on the numbers on this, well, but I believe sides. Four, four certified athletic trainers on each side, two separate neurologists on each side, ambulance emergency team ready to go, probably two or three physicians. And so when he went down, they came out. He was non-responsive. They came and immediately started doing CPR, brought out the AEDs. He had what's considered a cardiac event. They aren't disclosing actually what has been diagnosed or what they think's happened. He didn't have a pulse. They regained the pulse on the field using CPR and AED. What many medical professionals are agreeing to, potentially a condition called commotio cordis. So commotio cordis, but what happens is it usually is more common in adolescence with a little bit of a softer rib cage, basically. And what happens is a blunt force trauma to the heart causes VFib. So ventricular f- uh, fibrillation where it, you're kind of your ventricles, so the bottom part of your heart, you have your aorta uh-huh. that squishes, or your your atrial, and then you have your ventricles, and your atria pump into the ventricles, and then it pumps out into your body. One ventricle goes to your lung, the other one goes to the rest of your body. In order for the that pumping to happen simultaneously, it's called a lub dub. When they have that, you have electrical signals that go through your heart. Mm-hmm. So your SA node, your AV node, they're different things, and it sends this, and everyone's seen an EKG. Yep. And you go, dude. Commotio cordis is a condition where at a very specific time in the rhythm, you get a blunt force trauma that causes the chest wall to impact the heart. And, and this <clears throat> might happen one per million instances in anybody, in mm-hmm. any any of the adolescents, any kids. One per million you know, kids that get hit in the chest in the right spot and, with uh, a softball. Because f- I personally has, haven't seen the video or anything of it. Mm-hmm. So it was a helmet to the chest? Yeah, it was like a helmet chest. Yeah, he just wrapped him up. He fell onto the ground. So I don't Mm. know if it was a helmet hit. It was when he hit his gut sandwich between the guy and the ground. So what happens is it's just fluke. Perfect spot, perfect time. Yeah. Just amount of force to actually impact the heart itself Mm -hmm. um, that causes that disruption. You go into V-fib. Uh, and then you basically have a cardiac arrest. They had um, AED, defibrillator, CPR, um, and kudos to all the health professionals out there yeah, for, uh, of sheesh. fully grasping the gravity of the situation and immediately getting into CPR and stuff. I don't know if I would be licensed to be up there, if I don't know if I would would have acted that fast, to be completely honest. The medical personnel to be able to, to recognize the situation, to be able to give the CPR, to be able to continuously use a defib, if you can get CPR four minutes and less, the survival rate is uh, 25%. Got it. To put into a gravity of how serious that is. Yeah. Above that, it drops to, I think, less than 1%. But they were out there. They got it to him. They got his pulse rate back. And they continue with the CPR until they could intubate him and get him in. I think they were allowed, They were able to stop CPR once they got oxygen on him into the ambulance. Yeah, okay. But it took a while. So one of the toughest things to deal with in any type of medical field is brain. So that's why neurosurgeons, neuroscience, neurology, usually those are huge, huge heavy hitter subjects of like, this is complicated as hell because he could start to have, I hope not, pray not, essentially stroke-like symptoms because the whole part of a stroke is you get a clog of your, uh, one of your arteries. So your MCA, your ACA, your PCA are kind of your three major arteries in your brain And it gets clogged somewhere in there and it stops the blood flow. Now that causes no oxygen to be given to that area of the brain. That's how a stroke happens. That's how you lose that brain function. Yeah. Now just imagine the whole part of the brain doesn't have oxygen for a little bit. And so getting that is very, very key, very high. Um, It matters a lot. Basically every single second matters. You want to get as much in there as you can. Mm. That's what's going on. Um, You worry for some of that. Now, I think the latest update is that I saw um, today was they put him down to 50% oxygen from 100% oxygen, which is good, which means some of his um, 
like his Respiratory nervous system. System. Yeah, system. Yeah, so your PNS, CNS, um, they start to reactivate and you're starting to get that kind of autonomic use. Yeah. So the autonomic breathing, things like that, kind of reflexive things that you shouldn't have super amount of control over. Yeah. Pulse rate, pulse rhythm should start to even out. But again, I, I don't think this, I don't think he's out of the woods yet at all. I hope so. 100 percent yeah. hope everything's perfectly fine with him deoxygenation is in the brain is one of the most unpredictable and um unknown things we could yeah, ever have exactly i worked in a skilled nursing facility for some of my rotations and dealing with stroke patients there and we hadn't we had an entire three-month class dedicated to just strictly not even treatment of strokes but like hey if you had a stroke here what types of things can you see? Um, and so they so kind of put in categories of certain things like that yeah. could possibly. But happen. even then, even if you know exactly <clears throat> where you have the the blockage, you know yeah. exactly where you have the loss of oxygen, you know exactly for how long, you know yeah. exactly the depth of it. There's still a dozen different ways it's just something. Yeah, for sure. So it's very it's very it's going to be pertinent for the his early early recovery is going to be pertinent to get as much motor function and as much control and as much respiratory tract that you can. Um, just as much pure functioning as quick as possible. And the Glad name to answer. of the possible thing that you're saying again was? Uh, Commotio cortis. Commotio cortis. Yeah. C-O-M-O-T-T-I-O. Commotio. And then cortis is C-O-R-D-I-S, I believe. Cortis. We'll take um, it. Maybe two M's and one T. I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Close. Generally, again, that's usually a thing. Like they have um, kids. I don't know if you play Little League. They have them wear like chess cards. If you're out in the field, so oh, it's like yeah, optional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, sure that's what it's for is to stop that just because it's just a known case. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Again, not fully developed. it has to be perfect time, yeah, perfect my, placement, uh, perfect or imperfect, yeah. I guess, um, for all of that to happen. So it was a very, very freak accident. But again, yeah. kudos to that emergency team. Like I said, I don't know if I would have been 100% trained to deal with that. I don't know. Just how it can. I mean, anyone can go. Any medical professional that's trained would go out and look and be like, "Oh shit, no pulse. We got to get an AED. Yeah, because start doing that. But to have like the quick reflexes to just not freeze in that moment is pretty huge. 